So, Wendy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. for being here and uh, doing this interview. Um, can you tell us? Can you tell me uh, and tell us? I guess everybody who's watching. Um, first of all, how how did you get into the channeling process, and um, how did you come into contact with uh, the beings known as the Palladians? Oh gosh. Okay. So uh, yeah, I think a couple different things there. So. It was around 1994, mm -hmm. and I started having some visions, and I didn't really know what they were. They weren't the happiest of visions, um, but I wasn't frightened by them. And so I started doing some research for, for that to see if it was past life related, because that was what my instinct was. Mm -hmm. And so as I started that research to find out more about past lives, I came across channeling. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know anybody who did it. But I just knew it was something that I was supposed to be doing. And so when I... When you came across it, you came across it as... So you saw somebody else doing that? No. Uh, you know, I came across it in books. Oh, okay. And, you know, and there wasn't a lot of channel material out there at the time. You know, there was um, the Seth material mm -hmm. and Sinea Roman had some books out. But really there wasn't a whole lot. And I just... It was very familiar and I just knew it was something I was supposed to do. So I found some books and I started doing some of the meditation exercises and the visualization exercises and I was trying to channel verbally but it, it wasn't really happening for me. Mm -hmm. I was having really visceral experiences like my, my eyes would flutter in water and my hands would tingle but I couldn't form the words, I couldn't get the words out. Mm. And so I'd put it aside and then I'd come back to it and in the interim I did a lot of work on myself. I studied meditation and um, you know, did a lot of inner work, and then I come back to it periodically, and I had kind of the same experience. And then one day, I knew I was supposed to sit down with a pen and paper. Okay. And I started doing automatic writing. Excellent. And you know that I did well for for the first two years. I wrote down every single question and every answer. And about nine months or so into it, it was becoming very cumbersome to write. And so I put down the pen and then just started to channel verbally because I was hearing it well before I was able to write it. And I still use automatic writing today because it's much easier for me to remember the information. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a bit like a lucid dream for me, so at least I have the written notes and mm -hmm. I can go back to it. But about nine months in, um, that's when the Palladians showed up. Oh, and they were waiting for me to channel verbally because they work with tone and sound. Okay. And a lot of people will ask me where I'm from uh, mm -hmm. when they hear the Pleiadians. Uh, especially at the beginning, they sounded a bit more British. And then they went to this, they started working with new tones, and then it sounded a bit more Australian. And it, it's not <laughs> any one dialect. Right. It's just tones and sounds that resonate with you at a cellular level. Hmm. You know, and, they, and, and it was really interesting for me because when they started channeling and, and working with the new tones, it was using all different kinds of muscles. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, <laughs> can we can we tone it back just a bit? Right. Tone it, no pun intended. But um, <laughs> you know, it, it was it really affects us mm -hmm. vibrationally, and I could tell it, that there was a big difference. So we get a healing when we when we work with them. Not only do we receive the information, but the tones and sounds help to alter the cellular structure. Okay. And create more balance and harmony in the body. And. You know, how did I first meet them? I think I've been working with them all along. Okay. And I know that there is an aspect of me that is part of the collective. Mm -hmm. There are about 2,500 beings in the group. And there is an aspect of me that, that is a part of that. And they're in the ninth dimension. And they don't have physical form. They're beings of light. Mm -hmm. And they align with Alcyon, which is the central sun in the Pleiades star system. And, you know, because they don't have physical bodies, they don't incarnate, but they mm -hmm. align with a purpose or a function. And, you know, they're here to help us with records and information and to kind of oversee what we're doing to help us along the way so that, that we can start taking ownership and guardianship of the planet. And there's a, another role that we're about to step into at the galactic level. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, you mentioned earlier that you formulated questions and answers. Were the questions also being channeled? No, there were things oh. that I wanted to okay, know about, gotcha. you know, problems I was having sure. in my life. And, you know, I think early on everybody has the same couple questions, you know, tell me about love, tell me about money, tell me about career. Right. And, you know, then it evolves from there. Um, but, 
they started helping me with my own stuff and and that's kind of like the carrot to get right. us to to keep channeling mm -hmm. um, and that's also one of the hardest things I think for people what do I want to know about we've forgotten how to formulate questions we've forgotten right. how to be curious how to ask mm -hmm. because we're so conditioned just to kind of go along kind of mindlessly making our way through our day yeah. so that's that's a big step uh, in working with them is formulating your questions because if you don't ask you don't get right and it's kind of one of those tricky things. It's like, well, I don't know what I don't know until I know it. Right. Yeah. So where do I want to start? Yeah. You know, what questions do I want to ask and what do I want to know more, more about? Especially when you get to the more complex questions, the bigger universal questions. Sure. Because that can't be revealed until you're ready for it. And mm -hmm. once you formulate the question, that's kind of their signal that you're ready and they can give more information. Excellent. Well, that's... That's what we want to get into today. We have <laughs> lots of questions about uh, uh, about the universal uh, history and um, story. So, um, right quick before we introduce the Palladians, have there have you had any physical contact in the light sense? I mean, have you seen these lights? Have you had experiences in that level? With them, you know, my strength. Uh, is as a clairsentient, so mm -hmm. I feel a lot of things in my body. Mm -hmm. um, I occasionally will see things as a clairvoyant, like literally seeing lights and, and auric fields and that kind of thing. More that more of what I see um, in the clairvo clairvoyant sense is with my inner eye. Okay, so and like eyes closed and just... Yeah, what I would see in my mind's okay. eye. So when I do see them, they're usually blue. Hmm blue okay. light. Sometimes they have geometric forms, sometimes um, triangles. Mm. And so, uh, let me clarify, so you can see the geometric forms and the lights, but you feel a, like, a, almost like a human presence or something like that? How I feel a frequency. It? Okay. Um, and yeah, you know, you could say it's like a human presence. It's okay. like, uh, well, let's see, how can I... Like if, you know, like I know my cameraman here is is standing here is that is yes that so you know what analogy? his energy feels like right and you know you wouldn't necessarily have to turn around just to know that that person is standing sure. behind you and they often describe it as is like hearing somebody's footsteps coming down the hall after a while once you begin to know what that person's energy is like mm -hmm. what their patterns are like you know who it is by the sound um, uh, by of the, the footsteps. footsteps interesting what okay. their gates like so um, it's kind of the same thing with them I know it's them when they show up mm -hmm. sometimes they show up with other people mm -hmm. and I'll I can feel them but I know that they brought other people along because the frequency is different and sometimes they're making an introduction so mm -hmm. they're beings that I haven't worked with before and so when we say people we're talking about other light beings sometimes they're light beings sometimes okay. they're physical sometimes they're fifth dimensional sixth dimensional seventh dimensional and they do have bodies they're not as dense as ours but they do have physical form okay and i do work with a, a variety of beings the syrians that i work with they're physicals okay. they're fifth dimensional but i don't necessarily work with them in a conscious way where they're standing physically in front of me it's more telepathic communication that i have with them at and least in my waking hours and have you had physical contact then with other beings uh, you know uh uh non-light beings yes. body stuff okay yes. so you know Assyrians or no uh, different beings um, some of them are in insect some of them are insectoids oh interesting and then the zetas as well okay. and those are my physical experiences um, and another group who uh, I just recently had a, an introduction to I don't have all the bits and pieces as to who they are exactly but hmm. they're kind of a a cross between the insectoids and 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 what we would traditionally call the greys. They they look different, mm -hmm. and it's not the same species. But um, they've shown up for me. Interesting. Yeah. Is it? Do you find once you've opened yourself up to let's say this channeling experience back in the nineties? Uh, was it 94 you said? When I started, it was oh. in 94, and oh. I had kind of my breakthrough in 95. Do you think that has opened the door to other being experiences, or do you think we're all getting these experiences and we're just not tuned into it? Well, both. Okay. I think um, you know we're we're all connected to our guides. We've mm -hmm. got two guides that are with us twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, who are mm -hmm. who are helping us. 
and then we've got our celestial everybody. friends, everybody. Oh, okay. And, you know, I laugh because people think that channeling is just something that a few people do, mm -hmm. but everybody does it. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's, it's like being an interpreter. Mm -hmm. I recognize frequency and I translate it into a recognizable form, whether, you know, that's writing or whether it's speaking. But I think any form of creative expression can be a form of channeling. Mm -hmm. And my own experiences with beings, I think, started much younger. I think it started in childhood. Okay. But I didn't really have an awareness, a conscious awareness of that mm -hmm. until I started opening up in my early 20s. And I started having some past life experiences. And at the time, I didn't really understand that's what was going on. I was accessing some of that information. So, so once I made conscious contact, then some of the things that had happened earlier in my life made a lot more sense. I understood, oh, that's what that was. I see. So you think if we all could tap into this, then uh, this channeling experience or our guides, uh, humanity would uh, be a little less hectic or <laughs> frantic. <laughs> Maybe I we, think so. Or you know, more, because now there's so much more out there that we're not, you know, aware of. How, how about in your life? Uh, I'm sure this could go on into a much deeper conversation, which hopefully we can have later. But quickly, uh, by opening yourself up to this channeling experiences, has it been a a positive uh, influence in your life? Or? Oh, definitely, okay. yeah, yeah. I can't imagine not doing it. Mm -hmm. To me, it's normal. Gotcha. And I always, I always say it's going to be the new normal. Sure. Uh, because it's just expanding the connection that's already there. We're never disconnected from anyone or anything, mm -hmm. so it's just kind of opening up to what's already around us and and using what's available to us, the tools. And, you know, I, I think the guides are going to get into it. I'm already hearing they are. But, you know, part of it's understanding why we're here in 3D, mm -hmm. the purpose of 3D, the playground. And it's opening back up to other potentials and other games that we can also participate in. Excellent. Well, yeah. with that said, uh, let's yeah. can, we, <laughs> can we introduce the Palladians? Sure. And can we uh, start asking some of those questions? Sure. Excellent.